Welcome everybody, this is the Simhanger channel. My name's Mark. During one of my various sessions online, often trying to source product, and prompted by a video from VR Flight Sim Guy, I came across Authenticate. First of all, let me state that they don't sell anything. They're not a commercial organization. The founder, Phil Hume, was looking for a way to share his passion for both design and flight sim, and Authenticate was born. What they do offer is freeware, and I'll explain this a little later on. I have to be honest, initially I wasn't particularly interested, but that was because I didn't really understand what they were doing. But after digging in a little bit deeper and having a chat with the developer, well, I've got a much better understanding now. Whilst I accept this isn't for everybody, I realised that quite a lot of my subscribers may well be interested in this, and it was certainly worth a video or two. So for clarity, Authenticate are not going to solve anybody's sourcing problems. Although they do provide a somewhat unique approach to getting your hands on a number of bespoke controllers. But the products available will have a fairly wide appeal in terms of cockpit builders, VR aviators, and particularly those with a fondness for the vintage warplanes. So let me kick this off by explaining who they are and what they do and what they offer. Right now they're probably best known for designing bespoke flight controls for the Spitfire Mark 9. Authenticate is a freeware project, and they are creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on the vintage Warbirds, which will be followed by other vintage and classic GA aircraft. But more than that, their designs are exact replicas of the actual control found in that aircraft. But this is not just for cockpit builders. They've also come up with a recommended mounting system for VR pilots. In effect, a cockpit for VR. So the positioning of the respective controls is exactly where you'd expect them to be, so you can reach out and grab that throttle. So how does this all work? How do you go about getting your hands on one of these controllers? Well, step one is simply download the associated details and files for the respective controller you want. These are available free of charge for private use. It includes all details needed in order for you to build this yourself. Both product design and assembly have been designed to take advantage of 3D printing, thereby allowing easier access either individually by using your own 3D printer or utilising a third party, as well as other high quality components. But the big bang for me here is that you don't need any workshop tools, no soldering and no metalwork. But if you're like me, I have neither the time nor the inclination to run around and try and source the parts, nor do I want to invest in a 3D printer or try and find somebody who would print these for me. And once again, this is where Authenticate jumps in and can help, and take a lot of the confusion and hassle out of this process. And this leads us nicely on to step two. Authenticate has partnered with a third party, Simulation Kit Supplies, and they're able to carry out two very important functions. For each product, they're able to supply exactly what you need in terms of electronics, screws and wiring, and associated items. And they've made this simple, so you're able to order a specific kit just for the component that you want, be it a rudder trim or a flight stick. All links in the notes below. All products require some components to be 3D printed. And this is the second area where SKS can jump in and help. SKS is currently building and expanding a list of competent and quality checked 3D suppliers. Who knows, there may be one not that far away from you. And this is not limited just to the UK, but worldwide. By completing a request form on their website, once again, links in the notes below, they will then come back and give you the name and address of the individual company to contact. Now obviously prices may vary for 3D printing services depending on your location and any local variables applicable. However, Authenticate are putting together a recommended selling price scheme for those third parties as a guide. 
Further details can be found on the Authenticit and Simkit Supplies website. So, time for a quick summary and assuming you don't want to do it all yourself. Once you've selected your chosen peripheral, you can get all the bits and pieces required from SimKit Supplies and also put in a request for a suggested 3D printing company to assist you making the 3D parts. Once you've received all the items, well, it'll be like putting an Airfix model together. It's time for you to get a spare afternoon and assemble. An added bonus is there's plenty of help at hand. There's the Authenticate website which has a lot of detailed information as well as a number of tutorials. There's also the Discord channel. This is an ideal place to go for help. And as mentioned before, it is a community channel, so there are other individuals creating new components all the time. In addition, Authenticate have their own YouTube channel. And most of this is dedicated to instructional videos. For anybody wanting to take this a step further and invest in 3D printing, well, there's advice and recommendations on that as well. If you've got a 3D printer, well, no harm in contacting SimKit Supplies. Perhaps they can send some work your way. Not everybody has the space or the inclination to have a bespoke cockpit. Authenticate have thought about this too, and have come up with a suggested mounting system that will allow for quick assembly and disassembly. It's the common monitor arm desk mount. The only difference here being is that we turn it upside down. Here's a quick look at my system so far. You can see here I've mounted the main pole facing down rather than up. I'm also only using one arm and I've used one of the struts from the other arm to extend the arm that I'm using. I use this extension to allow me to have full movement of the flight stick and also allow access to the rudder pedals. I'm using this Spitfire flight stick with this spade handle. The one piece of essential equipment you'll need is the universal control hub. This can also be 3D printed and self-assembly. The control hub has a handy flap on it which protects the desk when the mount is clamped down and also holds the control unit in place. It's a single USB connector to the PC and up to 10 inputs. To secure the flight stick in place, the design allows for a simple slide-on, slide-off mechanism. With the mount being off the floor, it allows easy access to the rudder pedals. I've only got the flight stick at this time, but an extension pole can be fitted to correctly fit the throttle and trim wheel accordingly. And you can match it exactly to the position as per the VR cockpit. VR Flight Sim Guy did a video showing us his setup some time ago using the Authenticate equipment. An excellent video, I'll leave links to his video in the notes below. Here I'm demonstrating the range of movement that's available within the flight stick. There's considerably more than that allowed in a standard joystick, which means the resolution of movement is much finer and more controlled. To maintain the authenticity of the flight stick, it also has a brake handle on the outside of the spade grip itself. This is configurable in SIM, as are the button press, which in uh, the real Spitfire, of course, would be the fire button. I mentioned earlier it was relatively easy to take down. Let me demonstrate this. First of all, let's remove the connector cable, and then we need to slide off the flight stick. It's quite a firm fitting, and that's welcome. The robustness of a 3D printed item may be an issue of concern. And I think that the design of this product has taken careful consideration of various factors regarding the robustness of the product. And overall, my impression is a fairly positive one, with the plastic sections being relatively thick, just where you think they need to be. These products feature some clever design. Here we can see the slide on and slide off that fits to a bracket that attaches to the VESA mount on the monitor arm. In terms of overall sturdiness, I would rate this medium and would probably sit somewhere between Satec and Honeycomb. The massive advantage, of course, is spare parts are readily available. Just order them from the 3D printer company or alternatively, depending on the unit, from SimKit Supplies. Just releasing the clamps on the mount and I'll be able to remove the control hub. Disconnect the cables. My control hub is the basic model with four inputs, but the unit can accommodate up to 10 different connections. It's made of a fairly thin plastic, but the plastic is flexible, which is a good thing. 
It's not heavy duty, but it's good enough to get the job done. Here you can see the four inputs I've got, stick, quad, elevator and rudder. All that remains is for me now to remove the mount. The monitor arm has cable clips on it, so I keep the cable attached to the monitor arm. Makes reassembly quick and easy. And we're done. This is an extract of a video that the developer Phil did showing the quick change options for the various peripherals using the Authenticate system. As per the flight stick, it's using a simple slide on and slide off mechanism. Once connected in SIM, the controller shows as a Bravo Uniform 0836 interface. And obviously there's no configuration. Here I've set up a configuration for my flight stick, including the parking brakes. It correctly identified both axis and slider. In this instance, I haven't configured the button controls yet. Let's take a quick look at the sensitivity settings I've used on my first initial configuration. Having initially configured and calibrated in Windows, which is essential, I noted that my Y-axis was slightly off-center, which I've corrected by putting in a dead zone. My X-axis was central, but I did note a bit of chattering. The range of movement along both the X and Y axis, as well as the joystick slider, all seem fine, no major problems. Going back to the main config panel and having a look again at the aileron axis, the x-axis, the chattering is also evident here. Not sure why I'm getting this on a brand new controller. Before continuing, I just wanted to say that as a flight simmer, I'm not big on the warbirds. But I do need to mention Flying Iron Simulations Spitfire Mark 9. What an absolutely wonderful addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator this aircraft is, especially since its latest update. The cockpit improvement is significant. The flight model is challenging. I should have probably released this video a couple of days ago, certainly three or four days earlier. But I got so wrapped up flying this aircraft and controlling it with the Authenticate flight stick, well, I just couldn't get out of the air. To Flying Iron, I say well done, fantastic achievement. This gets my highest recommendation, guys. This is part one of a two-part series. Today we've really focused on what is Authenticate and what do they offer and how does it all work. But as they say, the proof of the pudding's in the eating and what's it like to fly around using the Authenticate equipment. And that will be the main subject of part two. And I'll certainly be taking up the Spitfire and giving it a buzz. And I'll be doing some flights in both 2D and VR. The other thing I wanted to mention is, although these flight controls are designed for a particular aircraft, they are, after all, a generic controller for the various sims. And I'll be trying out the flight stick in the DR400. And if I'm brave enough, well, I might even give it a spin in the Eurocopter H135, which I'm hopeless at flying, I will just add. Anyway, I look forward to you joining me for part two, and I hope you found this useful, informative, and interesting. Thanks very much for joining me. Take care and look after yourselves. I'll see you soon, and bye for now.